In this short video I'm going to show you how to use the Python script uh, node inside of Orange. Sometimes you just don't have an interesting data set to work with and uh, so you can just open the Python script node and you can write a bit of code and just generate your own data for use inside of Orange. I've opened Orange desktop here and you see on the left hand side all these little different modules uh, that I have. So let's open the data one and uh, what we want to import is just the Python script. I'm just going to drag the Python script right here to the screen. So let's double click on it. And you see I already have a, a little script here. Every time you create a script, uh, you can list it here. You can add a new one with this plus sign. If you change anything, you hit up, you just hit update. There's a more button for you to import scripts, etc. And then you see a little Python console here at the bottom. And with this version of, of uh, Orange, we're running Python 3.7.6, as we can see there. So there's my little script at the top. So we're just going to use scikit-learn to generate some data. And we're going to use the, the orange.data library just to, to handle the data for us. So let's look at the script. By the way, it's right up there, generate data. If you click on a new one, you can double click on it and just rename it. So let's have a look. It's a bit small there from sklearn.datasets. So sklearn is scikit-learn. So that's a library that's built into Orange here as one of the libraries uh, in Python. sklearn.datasets, we're going to import the make underscore classification function. And that's the function that's actually going to generate the data for us. It's going to be a classification problem in as much as the target variable is going to be a categorical variable. Then from the numpy library, I'm going to import two functions, where and c underscore. That's for concatenate, C underscore. And then from orange.data, we're going to import star. And that just means we're going to import everything from this data library inside of the orange package. Now, here we're going to use our make classification function right away. And it is going to create two things for us, two variables. And that's why we save them here on the left-hand side. It's going to be two NumPy arrays x and y, x for my feature matrix, y for my target vector. So we're going to say make classification. Now if you look at the make classification function on the scikit-learn website, you'll see there are plenty of arguments. We're going to use the n underscore samples keyword argument there, or just argument. And that's we're going to set at 10,000. So we're going to generate 10,000 rows of data. The number of features, n underscore features, so that's the number of columns in our feature matrix, so the number of variables that are going to be our independent variables, our feature variables, and we want five of them. n underscore classes, because this is a classification problem, my y is going to be a vector, and uh, I want this to have two classes. So it's going to be this binary classification problem flip uh, underscore y and we set that at 2% or 0.02 so it is just going to flip 2% of the values from one class to the other class just to make things a bit more difficult for our learning algorithms and then I'm just going to set a random underscore state a random state random set to 12 so every time I run this the script we're going to generate the same random values so my y I just need to change that from the zeros and ones, this is a binary class. We set uh, n classes equals two there. So we're going to have zeros and ones there. I just want to set that when it's zero, I want it to have the string no. And when it's yes, I want that to be changed to a yes, the string yes. So for that, we're going to use the numpy where function. So y equals where. And then we use a bit of Boolean logic when y equals equals zero. So it goes down every one of those elements in that vector. Is it zero? If it is so, if it returns a true, we're going to change that to the string no. If that's false, so in other words, y equals one, we're going to change that to yes. And that's how the where function works. And now we've just got to combine this into, we've got to concatenate these two, the, the matrix and the vector. And for that, we're going to use um, this C underscore and then uh, inside of square brackets, we're going to have x comma y. So it's going to take every y and connect it to the right row in this feature matrix x. And then I'm going to convert that to a list object. So I'm going to use this numpy array. 
I'm going to use a method called toList. I'm going to store that in a computer variable called data array. So we're just concatenating x and y there and we're converting it to a Python list. Now next up, the data tables that we see if you import a CSV file that gets converted into this data table structure in Orange. Uh, we've, got a, we've got to um, tell Orange or we've got to use code so that Orange could know what kind of columns these are, what kind of variables we're dealing with. Remember, if you draw in a, uh, drag in a CSV file, you can change that. You can change uh, the type of a, of, a, of a column. Because we're setting this with code, we've got to actually just, just uh, or we can just set it with code here. So we're going to have these five feature variables. So monthly underscore income, monthly expenses, bond repayment, vehicle repayment, month in saldo. Uh, how much money is left in the bank at the end of the month for every customer? So this monthly uh, underscore income, I'm setting this to a continuous variable. And you see the function there. So that comes from orange.data, import star. So that's one of the functions there in orange.data. And I'm going to give it a name, income. And the same I'm going to go for all five of my feature variables. They're all going to be continuous variables. Because that's what my classification is going to do. It is also going to normalize the data for me. So it's going to have a mean of zero and a... And a and a standard deviation of, of one. So, vehicle repayment then also, and just naming that vehicle and etc. You can see the pattern there. Then I'm going to create one more um, purchase, I'm going to call it, and that's going to be a discrete variable. And it's going to be called purchase, and the values are going to be no and yes. That is going to just relate to these that I've created up here. The no and yes. So it was zeros and ones before, we changed it to no's and yes, and now we're just creating this variable no and yes. Because now I'm going to use this domain function and look how we do that. We make this Python list, so it's all inside of square brackets, and we list all the feature variables which we've specified there, and then comma a class variable and that is going to be this discrete variable here with yes and no's in it. And all I have to do now is use the table function and then the dot form method on that table function and I've got to uh, specify the domain. So that's going to be this whole domain here and the data array. And remember the data array is this concatenated X feature matrix and Y uh, target vector. We've put them all together there. And we've got to use this from list because remember we created a to list conversion there. And so table dot from list, the structure of my data table is going to be this domain, and we've listed how this what the structure looks like. So that's a monthly income is a continuous variable, it's a continuous variable, and then my class is a discrete variable, and that is my class. So I just create the structure of the table there, and now we fill the table in. There's the structure of the table and we fill it with values that we concatenated up there from the make classification function. And then inside of um, orange there's the out underscore data object. So I've got to create a computer variable out.data and I'm just going to assign that to this whole table that we've just generated up here. And you can see on the left hand side there's some input variables in data in datas, in learner, in learners, etc., and then out variables, out data, out learner, out classify, and out object. So we've got to use this out data output variable, and I've created it there. And all we've got to do now, remember, if we just changed anything, just update it, hit the update button. But now we're just going to run the script, and suddenly you see the running script. It's executed without any problems. So there we go. That was our Python script. And what we need to do now is just to check what was generated. So let's go up there and we're going to view a data table. So let's click on that data table and we see there, there we go, there's purchase, yes or no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And we see this, the normalized values here generated um, by the make classification function, income, expenses, bond, vehicle, saldo. So it's all there. Remember, as always, the first thing we want to do is just a bit of descriptive statistics. So we're just going to go for feature statistics. So let's have a look at that. And we're going to color by purchase. So we see 
how many of the clients went for the purchase and how many did not go for the purchase and across all the numerical variables we see we see um, the graphical representation but what we really are after is center so that will be the mean and you can see the means at zero and we're going to see dispersion and that is the standard deviation divided by the mean the minimum the maximum and then the percentage of missing of course there are no missing values let's have a look at visualizing our data what we could perhaps do is just look at a scatter plot so let's just look for a scatter plot and there we go for all our numerical variables they all listed up here so i can go income versus expense and we can see very poorly correlated there we can go income versus bond and we can see something interesting going on there income versus uh, the vehicle purchase it's quite a quite a strong correlation there and uh, income versus the month in saldo you can see some interesting stuff going on there as well and that's it we've generated our own data using a python script so we needn't go into a jupyter notebook or open our python ide we can type a python script right here generate some data and we can see that data so just for uh, just for information's sake let's also just create a data sampler there and if we have our data sampler let's bring that in let's just take a fixed proportion 70 percent of the data is going to be our training data and 30 percent is going to be our test data and let's just create one quick little model here let's do a random forest model there's our random forest model I'm not going to go into it to set any kind of uh, any kind of uh, parameters there and uh, let's see what that looks like let's do a test and score test and score we see there and we also bring in our data sampler and you can see the model was running there and if we have a look at it we see an area under the curve of 0.95 and what was done is a five-fold cross-validation there. And that's it. We generated our own data. No need to, to have any data. We can just use a Python script and generate our own data right inside of Orange.